Hello, hello, I'm Mo from Mo Mountain Mutt. Some of you might have seen my TikToks floating around of the dogs getting on the puppy bus. That's me. And I'm making this video because I get a lot of messages asking how do the dogs not run away. So I want to help you guys learn how to train your dogs how to reliably recall. I'm an off-leash dog walker. I specialize in puppy socialization and trail dogs, so recall is something I do a lot. And the most important thing is to have a really good foundation. If you have a good foundation, you're going to set yourself and your dog up for success. Skipping past things, trying to get to level 10 when you haven't mastered level one, two, and three is going to set your dog up for failure. And that's not ideal. We want to set our dogs up for success. And so what a reliable recall would look like would be you call your dog, they stop what they're doing, they come all the way to you and they wait for another direction. That might be to stay with you, you might leash them up, you might release them. So when you call your dog, it's usually for a reason. You might see another dog or another person and you need to leash up. So recall for you might look like come to me, leash for a little bit, and then you get to go back off. It looks a little different for everybody, so you have to know what expectation do you want and be consistent with it. So if you have multiple people in your household, you should all be consistent on your expectation so the dog knows the expectation and understands. So that's important to be consistent in what you're training and to know what you want and then slowly work your way there. So you're not just gonna let your dog off leash and try to call them and see what happens. That's setting yourself up for failure as well. So we wanna work from the ground up, from the basic foundation. And there's a couple things you should consider like, you know, does your dog have good hearing? Do they have good eyesight? Are you going to be doing hand signals? Are you going to be doing verbal? Are you going to do a whistle? You know, what kind of recall do you want? So there is no do this to get this. There is a lot of gray area and there's a lot of modifications you will make according to your abilities and your dog's abilities. So I'm going to kind of give you the theory and the copy and paste, but you're not, this isn't like the say all, this really isn't the exact only way to do it. I'm just going to show you a pretty good way that teaches a lot of dogs. Um, so you can comment below if you have a different uh, problem that you're going to encounter, like maybe your dog isn't food, mo food motivated, so maybe I need to help you with a video on food motivation. So please comment below if there's something I could help you with in that aspect. So let's start with the foundation. You need to have really good trust with your dog. They need to respect you. They need to have a good relationship with you. They need to enjoy engaging with you because ideally recall your dog should stop what they're doing and come to you happily they should enjoy coming to you that should be a fun game for them to come over to you and get praised so a mistake that a lot of owners make is their dog is let's say causing a ruckus and running around and they're not coming back and the owner's getting a little frustrated and by the time they get their dog they punish them that's a big no-no that is a really good way to sabotage your recall, is to punish your dog when they're to you. Or let's say you have a puppy and maybe they had an accident, never call your dog to you and then punish them for something. That is detrimental to your relationship and to your recall. So there's, you know, there's a few like no-nos. Um, so don't, don't make your bubble bad, you want your bubble good. Every time your dog comes into your space, good things happen, not bad things. Um, so that's that's the first you know thing is understanding that recall means I'm making a sound and I want the dog to perform a behavior and that behavior is stop, come, wait for directions and hopefully it's come fast. We'll work on speed of recall, but in the beginning, your dog just needs to first know their name. That's the very first thing. Your dog needs to know their name, they need to have a good relationship with you, and they need to understand that your space is a good space and good things happen in your space. So when you call your dog to you, good things happen. You don't punish your dog in your bubble. All right, we got that. Everybody understand that? Let's let's move forward. All right, so you're gonna grab some food. And you're just gonna say your dog's name and toss him some food. Carl. 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 There you go. Then maybe I take some of the treats and I put them up between my eyes. And I say, Carl. And I feed him. 
And when your dog starts lighting up, shh, when your dog lights up and looks at you, you know that they expect food when you say their name. Let's get another dog. Louie! 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 Oops, she's gonna go down the stairs and get it. Louie! I'm gonna hand feed it to him. And I'm not, if I was standing, I would hand it down, not at my hip, so they're looking at me. Louie! Echo's very food motivated, so we're just gonna use her dinner to demonstrate some of the things that I would do. So I'm gonna take a piece of food, and I'm gonna put it between my eyes, because I want my dog to look at me when I say their name. Because my goal is when I say my dog's name, they look my way, then I give them a command. So when I do recall, I'm gonna say their name, then the command. So, echo. Echo. We can also go, echo. So she's gonna have to come back to me. That kind of creates that rubber band coming back and forth. Did I throw that too far? Echo. 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 Now, of course, my dogs already know their name, so you might need more repetitions, but the point is when you say, Echo, she looks at me, and she expects something good to happen. All right, so let's do this little drill. We're gonna do a sit and then a break. So we're gonna say echo, come, sit, and break. You might need to break it up. You might need to work on your sit. You might need to work on some other things first. You could just go come, say echo, come, echo, come. Throw one away. Echo, come, sit, break. And grab some more food. So what we're doing is getting her to look at us. Echo, come, getting her right in my bubble. Sit and break. Break is important with your stay command and your recall because when are you done doing this? There is a start and a finish. It starts when I say your name, echo. Good girl, come, sit, good, break. No, so you could go, come, 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 echo. So you might need to break it down and work on little pieces at a time until you can get the sequence of echo, come, sit, break. You see her wagging her tail, she thinks this is pretty fun. Echo. So you can pay for eye contact. Echo. Paying for eye contact. Notice I'm paying here, not here. Echo. Come, sit, break. And break, you're just throwing food away to let your dog disengage from you. Echo, come, sit, break. And if I have a young dog, I might back up a little bit more. I might be more exciting. And then, ooh, what are you doing, right? It's nice and exciting. Sit, break. So your recall could be a sit. Your recall could just be come and get some pets. Yeah, good girl. And then maybe a break. I like to give a physical tap to my dog so that they know 